we are back with my ultimate Arduino weather station and as you remember we have the OLED display we have the DHT 11 eh, it doesn't want to go in there and we're going to add two new things to it today we're going to add the active buzzer And we're going to add this nice, fine little guy right here. That's the BME 280 sensor from Adafruit. It's a pressure and temperature sensor. I originally thought it was pressure, temperature, and humidity, but I was wrong. So, we won't be getting any uh, humidity data, which is why we're keeping the old DHT-11. All right, so here we go. We're going to hook this guy up for you. Let's start off by connecting all of our grounds. You want to make sure you pay close attention. For instance, this buzzer and the DHT are from the same kit, but as you can see, their grounds are on different sides. And if you remember from what we talked about earlier, the reason, whoops, I'll put that in backwards. The reason that we put all of this, all of our grounds together, is so that we have a common ground. for everything to work off of. Otherwise, remember voltage is nothing but potential. It doesn't know where to go. All right, so we've wired up the grounds for each of our devices. Next, let's wire up the positive. And for most, that will be plus five volts. The reason I say for most is because the OLED screen is a 3.3 volt. Now here's something kind of cool. Let me uh, zoom in here. If you look at the BME 280 sensor, you can see the pins we have VN, 3 volt, ground, clock, SDO, SDI, CS. Well, it has a level shifter on it. That little guy right there is a 5 volt to 3.3 volt level shifter. So, you put your uh, VCC to VN, but you can grab 3.3 volts out of that guy right there. And we're going to make use of that. All right, so we were doing our positive voltages, our plus fives in this case. All right, now remember I told you that the OLED is a 3.3 volt device. Well, we're going to grab that 3.3 right there right off the BME 280 pretty cool good on you lady Ada for putting that on the board alright next we have our I2C pins so SDA serial data is A4 I need another long one here. And SCL serial clock. Well, that's A5. So 
So our OLED is all hooked up. Now all we need to do is hook up our I squared C to the BME 280. Well, check this out. I'm going to plug right into the clock pin here and right over here to serial clock and data goes right over here to SDI. It's pretty nice that you can jumper all that stuff together and that's the beauty of the I squared C bus style interface. As long as things have a different address everybody talks to everybody we get along fine. All right everything's all set up here let's head on over to the PC and take a look at the code. All right guys this may look like a lot of stuff going on here but it's uh it's very linear so it's easy to follow so you know don't get worried when you see how this is probably the largest program we've written so far so anyway this is the ultimate Arduino weather station and this is version 1.3 by me learn electronics so we got some includes wire SPI Adafruit sensor BMP 280 uh, Adafruit GFX, SSD 1306, and DHT.H. Now, if you're not using the OLED, you know, you can skip those. Uh, we're going to define our DHT pin is on pin 8. Type DHT 11. OLED reset is 4. And we're going to reset our OLED screen to start out with. Now, since Lady Ada was kind enough to write all of these libraries for all of us for absolutely no charge, I leave in her logo at the beginning of the programs because she's cool like that. All right, we tell our DHT what pin and what type. Then we begin our setup. Uh, pin mode 9 is our only output and that is the output where the buzzer is. Start our serial comms. Start our DHT sensor. Start our display. Clear the display. And we're going to wait two seconds. Now we're going to clear the buffer and that's going to give us the uh, Adafruit logo. I don't know why that's there. I forgot to remove it. So here's where the actual program is. We're using floating point mathematics here. If you want to know more about that, you can go to help and click on reference and you'll find the float types in there. So my temp is a variable, a floating point variable we've created and my temp is BME read temperature so that's reading the temperature from the BME sensor multiplying it by 1.8 and adding 32 because I am an American and do not think in Celsius my pressure BME read pressure multiplied by 0 0.000295 again American do not think in Pascals this will um, convert the pressure reading in Pascals to inches of hydrogen. Don't get confused with pounds per square inch. It is not the same thing. Finally, H is a DHT read uh, humidity. And then we're going to begin displaying everything. That's this section right here. So we're going to set our font size to 2 and our color to white. We're going to set our cursor to the upper left corner and clear the screen. Then we will print my temp. Then we will print a space and the letter F for Fahrenheit. God bless the USA. Then we will, on the next line, display and print my pressure. Display and print a space in inches of hydrogen. And that's the print line, so if we have a carriage return down to the next line. It will print humidity. 
and then it will print space and a percent because we are looking at a percentage of relative humidity and then boom this is the key to this uh, OLED display library all this up here has happened in the buffer and then when you give it this line display display this function then it prints everything at once now we're gonna wait for three seconds because there's no reason to keep hitting it after that we began our storm warning section now probably the most reliable way to predict a storm is not to listen to your local weatherman because they don't know any more than you do the most reliable way to predict a storm in my personal opinion is a decrease in barometric pressure so we're saying here if my pressure is less than 29 inches of hyd hydrogen and that's um, that's an arbitrary figure uh, I might go down as low as like 28.7 if that happens then we are going to set our display size to 3 color to white position upper left corner clear the screen and then we're going to print on two lines in big letters storm worn boom print it and then this little uh, bit of code right here is going to make that buzzer go deet 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 so this whole thing here says if the barometric pressure drops below 29 inches of hydrogen clear the screen print storm worn and go deet 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 and then wait a second and then wait another second and start the whole thing over again now if you look down here you can see that uh, it says low memory available and that is because we have included all these libraries but that's necessary what are we using here um, four separate uh, well three separate sensors and the OLED screen so we're pressing pushing that um, the memory in an uno about as far as you can go if you're going to go any bigger you're going to want to go with a mega but that's about it let's take a look here is everything wired up and working fine here's our beeper our dht11 bme 280 and our oled and as you can see we're getting 71.01 degrees fahrenheit 29.39 inches of hydrogen and 21 percent relative humidity so it's not triggering our uh, storm warning alarm but what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the parameter so that it triggers if the pressure is under 30 which is significantly higher than it needs to be I would put it for under 29.5 if I mean if, no 29.7 if it's under 29.7 then you're looking at a serious storm um, anything above that you know no big deal all right, compiling, 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 uploading. Here we go. So this should set off the alarm. And there we have it. Goes back to showing you the data. And as long as we have our we are under <laughs> as long as we are under the limit for the uh, air pressure the alarm will continue to go off now I know you say well that's uh, that's kind of annoying there <laughs> you're right it really is kind of annoying but perhaps there are times when you would want to be annoyed like for instance you know if you had uh, stuff outside that you didn't want to get wet or to get damaged or anything like that but if that is not the case a simple switch like this one wired between say the buzzer and the ground eliminates that problem and you never have to be bothered by that beeping again 
So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this. This is uh, version 3 of my Ultimate Weather Station. It's still not done. If you like it, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up and share it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please uh, do subscribe. I'll catch you next time.